Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. This is John with Tommy's Top Picks here to bring you another Kickstarter opening. I was going to get this for the shelf, uh, but it came with this tag on it. Yeah, that's the reason I'm going to open it, because it had a tag, and I, I don't like the tag. Sure. <laughs> Actually, I want the cards inside. I built a deck using some of the themes that are in this set, and uh, there's... I'm hoping there's some spiciness in here that I can add to that deck. Uh, that would be great. And I wanted to show off my new fancy uh, Genesis mat that just showed up. Kind of smells funny because it's still got that... Uh, there we go. Got to get the Genesis in there. Hold up. Let's get it in the frame. There we go. Genesis. Um, this thing does not fit on my desk because the battle mat's huge. It's very nice. Very good quality. But uh, but it does stink. It has that chemical smell because it has been in its wrapping probably since it was produced. Uh, it's already starting to air out and, and uh, the smell's going away. I actually cannot wait to use this because um, this game is a lot of fun. And just having the extra in there is, uh, is just, you know, it, it brings the theme together. It feels good to battle in an arena and uh, move the monsters around and stuff. So anyways, uh, just want to see if I can get some spice out of this box. Um, and we're going to have a little conversation about the state of the economy in general. Um, for those of you longtime fans, this is similar to what the, I guess, Fab 2.0 conversations were. I would talk about how Fab 2.0 was doing, and then I'd go into some conversation about macro, you know, economic system and situation. Uh, this one's going to be more newsy than uh, random philosophy, if you will. Some of those got a little, little bit more in the philosophy side. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump in and go through it and, uh, and have a little chat. Why not? Um, hope there are some new people to the channel from the, uh, from the Genesis world. Welcome if you are. Uh, we do whatever it is we want. Uh, that's the whole point. Tommy's Top Picks means uh, anything that we find... Oh, yeah, I forgot to say the box topper. Super sweet. Uh, anything we find fun and enjoyable, we do it. I find Genesis fun and enjoyable. I was a Kickstarter backer. Uh, I did not buy enough boxes, clearly, because I ended up secondary market buying the... Um, the uh, that box right there that I just opened. And uh, I'm excited and happy... To open it. Uh, I have been having a blast building decks and uh, Tommy's interested in playing some more. We've, we played in the past. We played the starter decks way back um, but he hasn't played since this new stuff came out and there's definitely some some spice in here for sure. I was very excited about the first box. So let's see what we got in the box topper. Oops. Wrong side. Alright. Let's flip it. Drum roll please. Alright. Electrical Storm promo. Ooh. Inferno Crawler. I don't think I've seen this before. Definitely not in full art, at least. Is that good? Can you guys see it? The art is growing on me. I definitely like this Origins art um, better than J2. Uh, but even J2, it's it's actually starting to grow on me. Epic Rare Water Warp. Uh, I'm getting into it, guys. I'm getting into it. And I'm falling down the rabbit hole. These are in such good condition. Nice quality. Look at that. Like no nicks on the edge or anything. Very good. Very, very good. All right. I'll put these up in the corner. Don't want to cover up the Genesis, so we'll leave them right there. And then we'll do our piles. All right. Let's get into it. Uh, so, yeah, I built two decks. Uh, just to kind of give an overview of what I'm looking for here. One of them was Kato. The other was Iblis. Uh, Iblis was primarily relying on... Uh, damage reduction, both of its character and then damage reduction kind of spells and stuff. And then the bugs that replicate that are in this set mostly. That's what I'm hoping to get a hold of in this. Um, and then Kato was a lot of... Uh, oh yeah, this one's in there. Launch, you get to throw your bug into the back lines. It's hilarious. I love that. It's so thematic. Um, Kato, what was Kato doing? Kato was doing lots of spells had some big monsters I think is what it was but I, I honestly don't remember I have to go through the deck again precise thrust away landmine I like the traps in this set I think that's pretty neat Ooh, tsunami nice hit oh yes I need one of these tokens um, I may only have one and I think there's a couple of situations where I might end up throwing a few in there at once um, so yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it so far. Can't wait to play with the decks I built, built a couple, uh, might do some testing, like, uh, what do they call that, where you play against yourself, uh, uh, 
what's it called? Uno, Uno, something like that, whatever they're called. Or you get to test it out, you just play against yourself, see what it looks like. Those are very good. Uh, I have that in one of my one of my decks, or at least I think I do. They were in the first cut. I'm not sure if they made it to the second cut. I have these, so that's a great hit. Shun. Earth Cub, Smokin' Rajak, Block. Block was good too. I threw that in as a filler because I ran out of cards that I wanted of the correct, uh, uh, was it affiliation? I think is the name of the proper term, affiliation. And uh, key cost. So um, there's a video out if you haven't seen it yet on the deck building and how I did it for this deck, the Iblis deck. Um, so that is the deck that I'm actually working to modify. So feel free to check that out. I'm sure it will show up in the other stuff you may like recommendations by YouTube. Mmm, Naja Cobra. That's in one of mine as well. Very good stuff. Some vengeance. All right, more ant tokens. I love that because I did not get that many in my last box. But yeah, what do you guys think? Are you playing games? Do you have a favorite hero? Um, Kato definitely uh, feels like he's going to be my favorite, but the more I'm looking at the yellow cards with the on the stack stuff, the more I think I will eventually fall into that category. I'm not sure what hero, though. That's the thing. I haven't decided on a hero that has the... Uh, what is that? Oh, shoot. Come on. I know this. Holy... No, belief. Ha. The belief affiliation. Yes. Got it. Uh, took a second, though. Yeah, belief is this one. Emotion, mastery, uh, survival is the green, and chaos. Yes, I'm remembering things. I'm learning, guys. I'm learning. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yes, bacteriophage. That's great. I definitely have that in the deck. Uh, Sarah. Kind of want to make a deck with her. Uh, haven't gotten around to it, but she seems fun. The whole life drain thing. Um, and she doesn't have the. Uh, and she has a. Was it the uh, decay? Uh, no, 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 it's just life drain and then life drain. Yeah, she doesn't have the one where uh, there's another vampire that has um, a disadvantage. Every time he doesn't gain life, he loses life. Now, he gains more life than that when he does, so he can kind of bounce it out, so you don't really have to do it every time. Um, but it's, it's pretty interesting. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into some topics of economics. That's a cool card. I think that's really fun. Terrible memories. I don't, I don't think I saw. Ooh, full art. Nice. Epic rare. That's so nice looking. Yeah, this is part of what makes me like like this. Um, so, yeah, economics. What is going on in the world? Um, so, very, very, very shallow recession, if you would consider it a recession. I know some people absolutely are adamant that it absolutely is, even though it has not officially been declared in a recession. And in the U.S., the only place that can officially declare a recession is the MBER, I believe, uh, Economic Research uh, Organization. They are the ones who declare recessions, but they're always really late. Like, they take forever to do it. So, the rule of thumb is to... Um, two negative GDP growth uh, quarters. That is the rule of thumb that people go by. Uh, but it is a rule of thumb and not necessarily a full out accurate statement to say that is a definite recession, especially when you have other economic factors to consider, such as inflation and employment, both of which are doing the opposite of what the rule of thumb for economics is in a recessionary environment. Neither of them should be going up. And they both went up um, recently. So, so based on the economics of a recession, doesn't look like we're in one, but we're very close to one if we aren't. And I've been talking to a lot of people. For those of you new to the channel, um, I have a job in finance. I invest in companies for a living. And so I'm pretty nice on common chaotic manipulation. That's cool. Nice. Uh, that looks really good too. Look at that. Um, so I have, you know, a little bit of insight and professional knowledge on this stuff. Um, not, not everything. I'm no expert. I'm not an expert in, you know, all economics and finance, but I, I do know some things. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, touch on what I've heard. I've been reaching out. Uh, we have a member of the Philadelphia Fed sits on the board. Um, and then I have some uh, LPs that are invested in my funds 
that uh, run banks and so I get some pretty decent amount of face time with them and I was talking to one recently and I said what do you what do you think about this macro environment's kind of crazy and it's like hard to hard to tell what's going on and uh, he's like yeah actually this is the scariest economy I have ever been in in some ways now just don't freak out don't panic um, his reasoning and I think it's very sound reasoning is that Oh, yeah, I forgot these ones can rip. They just like tear nicely. These are better packs than the, the uh, J2s. Um, is because it, it's outside a textbook. Uh, like I said, a recession usually means job decreases and deflation, not inflation. And so a recession with inflation and uh, job increases is just outside of the realm of normal. We don't know what to do in these cases uh, as people that you know do financial uh, transactions like banks and the like um, and investment funds um, and so he is he is saying that this is some this is some weird times and I agree they're gonna they're gonna add a chapter to the textbooks like the one on stagflation after this period for sure um, so what does that mean for the cardboard world because I like to bring it back to what's real and tangible for all of us cardboard fans oh, man that was my fault. I screwed that up. I couldn't. I couldn't tear it. Now it's like jammed up. There we go. Um, uh, well, what it means is kind of what we're seeing, right? If you watch the market update, uh, sealed prices have essentially flatlined. They've hit kind of a floor and just kind of flatlining. A little bit of a dip here and there. Um, a few of them are going back up, but mostly it's a reversion to the mean, and it tends to be lower than its previous high. So not going up like stellarly, not giving you a good return. Corrine, I've never seen Corrine in this form. That's a cool picture. That fits what she does much more than that other the foil one. I like the foil one better for sure. But that's that's cool. Um, so why do I think that's happening? So one of the things that was interesting about this particular recession is if you look into the data beyond just the top line number, see that was nice. Um, it is a transition between a uh, retail, online retail primarily economy that we've had for the past two years while everyone's locked down and a services economy. She's really interesting, very evasive. So I, I think I got to build a deck around her at some point. Um, and a uh, um, services economy, which traditionally the U.S. Uh, economy has been. I don't remember the exact breakdown, but historically, kind of pre-pandemic, um, the services part of the economy took up, I would say, something like 60 to 70 percent of the economy. I don't think I've ever seen that. It's awesome. Um, 60 or 70 percent of the economy was services. Cool. Um, and so when the recession hit, or rather, I apologize, the pandemic hit, everyone went into online retail shopping mode, didn't go out as much, didn't do the services stuff as much, no hotels, etc. Um, and so what ended up happening was we saw a big transition and a big change in how the economy worked. Well, that's starting to happen the other way now that the pandemic is kind of coming to a close. Beautiful. Beautiful. Love that. That's definitely going in the deck love that um and so with that transition what you end up seeing and this is this is classic these these pandemics tend to last about four years 1918 flu did many of the waves of the plague did um we have data on this we even have some economic data on what happens and how it how it uh unfurls and all that stuff but um what this ends up meaning is that uh you know things like cardboard things that were in high demand while everyone was locked down uh probably are going to have downward pressure for some time um, and in fact, we may even see, I don't have a historic reference, but I know it's happened. Uh, someone that knows cards and stuff, uh, baseball cards and that sort of thing, uh, in the nineties, I believe it happened where there's just this boom, right? Everyone was doing it. And because everyone was doing it, it's happened in comic books too. Tommy's talked about this in the past. Um, because everyone was doing it, there's just a ton of them. Uh, I think the classic example, it was it George mentioned it maybe on kitchen table tcg um uh, was uh was it batman's dead uh that one where uh, they have him, his back breaking or whatever um the death of batman comic was so sought after that literally everyone has one that was collecting at the time and a ton of people that, so it never really went up in value right that's the that's the lesson is that when everyone's doing it 
uh, then there's just too many in the market. And that's what I think is happening right now with cardboard. There's too many in the market on a lot of stuff. Um, and so we're going to see this for a while. And I think the Fab 2.0 is a good, uh, more market reactive printing plan. So they'll probably be okay. Uh, I think like MetaZoo, they cut it in half. So they'll probably be okay. I mean, Genesis has always been uh, smart about this. My understanding, I don't have any in-depth detail, but they were not trying to do the free Tindy thing, which I think is admirable and good and very uh, important for the stability of the game and the gameplay. So that seems to be what's going on with that, um, which is also one of the reasons I don't mind opening a Kickstarter, right? Because I have a feeling they'll be available and I can put one on my shelf when I want to, even if I have to pay a little bit of a premium a few years from now or it won't be a few years. I'll probably buy it next month, I'll be honest. Um, but point being that uh, I think we're sit sitting at a point where we're going to see a lull. It's going to get quiet. It's going to get um, ugly if you're looking for free tendies. Perfectly fine if you're happy putting stuff on shelves and you actually enjoy the games and that sort of stuff. Um, ooh, that is baller. I don't think I've seen that art. Lunging Assault. That's really cool. Uh, another ant token. Love these guys. Um... So I think that's where we are. Um, that's that's the nature of what's happening. The services stuff is is booming. Uh, like I said, if you looked at that GDP report that was the quote unquote recession indicator one, uh, if you dig into it, the services industries are booming right now and the retail is switching off. And of course, services had a hard time meeting demand because like airlines, uh, laid off a bunch of people, downsized because there was no one flying because of COVID. And then suddenly everyone's flying because of COVID. So now flights are getting canceled, uh, luggage is lost, et cetera, because they just don't have enough staff uh, to actually handle it. So this you're starting to see w the impacts of this kind of like off kilter response to things and the timing differences and how it's happening and what's going on. And then as everyone comes out of this, assuming we don't get like another crazy bad wave or some, you know, new thing or something, um, we'll see that, you know, we'll go back as a, as an economy to mostly services. Cause that's what the U S does. And then retail will be, you know, we'll be there too, but just not as big of a part of it. So I think that's what we're seeing. I think that's what we're going to see. Um, obviously none of this is financial advice, because uh, I'm just a guy sorting some cardboard on the internet. You shouldn't trust people like that with your money. That's just not a smart way to go. They don't know what they're talking about. They're just sorting cardboard. Ooh, firing Krog. Never seen that one before. Water brand dude. That guy's cool. Maybe I have seen it before. Maybe it's a different art or something. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at with this. Uh, I am happy to collect these things. I will continue to collect these things. Uh, only thing I'm cutting out right now is um, MetaZoo for the moment. Uh, I might go with the next set since they're cutting the, the rate, uh, the print rate in half. Uh, might be worth putting one on the shelf. At, I think I've mentioned this before. If you're going to have a smartly diversified collectible portfolio, uh, obviously Magic and Pokemon are your number one assets because they will go up over time pretty much a guarantee not a huge guarantee but pretty much and then um, after that these other games are riskier for investment purposes and again not financial advice um, but I like having exposure to things that have higher risk tend to have higher reward uh, just don't expect that reward tomorrow right don't expect it in six months don't expect it in a year expect it in the three to six year period which is very standard for something like this if you look at the data um, on other notes, uh, equities. Ooh, neat. Airbrain sneak. Okay, I don't think I've seen that one at all. It's an air attack too. Ooh, look at that attack area. I wonder where the Crocs was. I'll have to go back and look. Um, oh, another epic full art. Look at that. That's baller. That was the art I was talking about. That is great. I like these boxes. Aside, if you're ever listening, I like the way you engineered this product. It's fun to open. Um, so, let's see, what was I talking about? Now I got lost. That, that full art threw me off. Oh, yeah, equities. So, equities, uh, they're definitely going to see some, some shaky stuff. I actually do worry about the global economy because we have a couple of key factors that could shake things up. One, winter in Europe with energy um, uh, problems from Ukraine slash Russia situation. That could cause massive economic damage, which could cause massive... Um, instability globally and then contagion happens and it spreads to other parts of the economy 
Uh, second thing that's actually worrisome, because I think maybe a month ago, uh, I said that it, we were seeing green shoots, and we were, uh, and things started to look like they were getting stable, and they were. Um, but things happen that uh, adjust that. And when you're kind of on the shaky edge, any big thing can really throw you over the edge. And I think that's where we're at. I don't know if we'll go over the edge into a, like, a real deep recession. Um, it's possible, though. So one is the, the winter oil situation, Russia, Europe, etc. And then, I love these guys. And then the other one is the... Um, Sorry, the China issue. They're having finance issues right now, like runs on banks. And it's not exactly as dramatic as that. And it's more kind of for the finance wonk and nerd like me. Um, but it is having an impact on various things. Now, they, because of the way they uh, manage their economy, they have a little bit better buffer against these things causing any contagion. But it's not guaranteed. At some point, it can hit a tipping point where there's nothing they can do. And it just spreads. And if that happens and spreads... One thing that may result, unfortunately, and this is just a history lesson for you, uh, when economies get shaky and countries are determined to avoid collapse, they sometimes go to war, and the whole Taiwan thing is possible. Uh, I wouldn't like bet on it. I'd say it's like you know probably ten percent less chance, or less chance. Not that I have insight on war plans or anything like that. Just uh, just from the situation there and the economy structure and what is going on there. I would doubt that they want to do that, but they may if they get in a bad enough state. But what I'm actually worried about is it gets out of control and it just spreads globally. Uh, we have a financial uh, Chinese financial crisis uh, dealing with their real estate and they have various products that are problematic. I swear I've seen this. Oh, no, no, it's the other one. Never mind. There's another frog that's in like rare and epic rare. Um, it might be in J2. I can't remember. Um, but if that spreads, if that happens and spreads, then uh, that could shake a lot of the economy because they're so tied to so many people. Range fire tech. This guy looks cool. I'm going to have to build something with that. Maybe that goes with the vampire. Looks like a good one for the vampire. Um, and if that spreads, then, you know, who knows what happens, right? That's, that's where it gets to a we can't really say what the results will be it goes chaotic because it uh if, if you recall when i talked about the various nodes that touch and the uh ecosystem of finance and how they they all interact it's like certain parts of the economy will quote unquote go extinct which will cause other parts of the economy to struggle which will cause you know that's what contagion is and so um if china does hit a major uh issue economically then that could spread and knock the whole world into a global recession and that would be probably be a pretty big one. The war thing, I think if it happened, that'd be more of a medium one. Um, but that really depends on the fuel sources and the ability. Oh, nice. Another, another foil. Slum rat. Three foils. Or no, two foils. Okay, good. Two foils in the box. Um, but that would depend on exactly how that spreads and how uh, Europe handles the energy issue. So... Just saying that we are not out of the woods yet. Um, even people that deal with the economy for a living and uh, in detail are not comfortable with where we are and saying that we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, and the cardboard world will reflect this. Um, I think we will have a much better time at getting supply. You know how we had all the logistics issues. I think that's going to slowly fade because you're not getting the same level of pandemic interference. Um, I would say, I think I saw a report, the pandemic inflation i think was something like 40 percent of it could be attributed to um interference by the pandemic so you just don't have the workers you have to pay workers more because they're getting sick um you know things like that uh supply chain issues unable to get iron etc um core materials etc um so because that seems to be less of a factor going forward uh, presumably, uh, then uh, inflation should start coming down, you know, relatively soon, six months, call it, you know, six months or so. Um, I'm sticking with my plan. If you heard what I talked about in one of the previous videos, I had 10 month plan from the uh, six month of negative growth period. So what would be declared a recession would allow people to declare a recession. That quarterly mark, I had 10 months of capital that was being slowly deployed. Um, in a very risk averse way across multiple assets um, using a sharp ratio, which is a way to uh, get the greatest return for the least volatility. Um, I probably will not talk about that on this channel later. 
Uh, some people do. There's some good good resources out there on that, but that is essentially what you want to do is try to maximize your gain, minimize your risk. It's one way to do that. Um, and so that's what I'm doing for the next 10 months is deploying slowly. If we get a big crash, I'll take advantage. I'll deploy quicker. If we don't, then I will be done deploying approximately, um, let's see, 16 months after the start of the recession, which most recessions, let so five months after the bot or the the uh, the recession is a on average over. Uh, average recessions last eleven months. You don't realize you're in it until you're six months in. Um, so five more months theoretically at minimum, and I'll be deploying beyond that. Obviously, if I'm doing it for ten months, so I'll be doing it for five months after kind of the post recession period. That is my current plan. Uh, like I said, things can change and I will change my plan accordingly, but that is my current plan. Uh, not financial advice. I hope you guys enjoy this content. If you do, leave a comment, push that like button, subscribe, share it with a friend, especially if you're new to the channel and you like Genesis stuff and you want to share my odd ramblings with other Genesis-like people. Uh, if you enjoy these odd ramblings, uh, the Fab 2.0 series, you can look for the titles in the, in the channel. Uh, that's where I do a lot of these ramblings. Some of them got a little weird, I won't lie. Started talking about uh, time crystals, which I thought was pretty uh, interesting, but I think uh, I kind of jumped the shark on that one. Uh, but most of it's economic ramblings, how things work uh, from my perspective and what I've learned in my professional life. So I hope you guys enjoy the content. Most importantly, I hope you're out there having fun, cracking packs, playing games with your friends, and enjoying this hobby that is so fun and so near and dear to my heart. And until next time, have a good one.